Hello. This is a weekly trade review. I just finished finals, so I was only able to trade Thursday and Friday of this week. I decided it's best to let my mind focus on one thing at a time. So cool studying for that once I was done. I was able to trade power hour on Thursday and Friday. So March 21st and March 22nd of 2024. Starting at 12 p.m. Here's the 12 p.m. candle for Thursday. So the purple box is the opening 30 minute range of trading for the for the um, Thursday. For um, basically that day session. So you can cover this candle kind of on both sides after a rally. Strong close as well. Then towards the end of the day, we return to this area and 11.30 had one moment here of trading in this range for the first time it's, it's open. Then this is the one I'm most interested in, the 12 o'clock 30 minute candle. This was supposed to be an entry. Okay, right here. Oh, this is difficult to work with. There we go. Right there at 18560 was the 12 p.m. the high noon entry here, beginning of power hour. This candle opened at around 5.70 at high noon, dropped down into this range, this long zone, and found a bid here. And this was the trade that I didn't get in. I hesitated. Um, I, I did want a deeper interaction with this zone, given that the original time we came into the zone, it was a very shallow interaction as well. Um, I mean, this one, this one was great too, but I wanted, I wanted to spend a little more than any, just, than just freaking 10 seconds in there. It was literally there for like a few seconds. There was a bit already there, so I hesitated and watched the trade from 60 to 95, pretty much just the staircase. When stuff really starts to get going, power hour, uh, we found ourselves about 600 and we fell back into the zone. This time getting a much better test. However, as you can see here, we ran out of time and power hour before I could take another entry. So this great test here never got an entry from me because it was five minutes before 1 p.m. That's, no, that's nothing for me. I'm not interested in taking a long five minutes before the market closes. This was the real entry right here, taking it back up to 695, right? And then I did take a trade here though that I'm not so proud of. It was in the middle of volume, kind of random, I remember it was, I think it was 70 or something. My entry was about 70. Not happy about that trade. It was a starter position, one micro, long. And I'm not going to lie, it was a little bit of FOMO. It was... I, so what I saw was I saw a, a, a bid for 200 contracts. And that's what kind of, I was like, okay, well, if... As long as they're gonna come in here, then this is seems like where they're at, right? Turned out, I think that bid got pulled out and it never held at that price. Not much more to be said here, I think. It was my first trade back in finals, so that's why we need to scale in. That's why I like scaling in. 
because it's much less stressful. It took a $25 loss there. Alright, moving on. Let's delete the Thursday range. Now here is Friday's opening range. And this is the, the, the futures market opening range. The New York opening range for Friday is this the screen the screen uh, long zone here. It, it would have been nice if you guys could see the value profile of Friday. I can attempt to draw it out because I think it really says some nice things about Friday. Oh wait, what am I doing? Oh no. It doesn't work on this one. It looked kinda like this. So like Okay, that's what the volume looks like. You can see why I drew these yellow boxes because these are the anti nodes of the volume for this day, for Friday. I don't find it surprising that there's there is a, a node just above the futures market opening range and that there is an anti node just below it because we've been bullish. So any lower prices are gonna get bid up real, real quickly, or, or they're not really gonna get transacted at. As you can see, this area is went through, right? There are strong decisions in this area. That's, that's kind of what these mean to me, right? So all of these areas. Well, what, what did I do good on Friday? So I traded power hour. Here is the high noon candle, 12 p.m. I was right here, ready for this trade, and we just never got it. We never, we never got the zone, right? It did, it did t um, interact with the anti node. Could I have gotten in a starter position? Yeah, I could have. Should I have? Probably, because it was Friday and I think there were definitely a lot too many shorts and um, definitely a little bit of covering should have happened, which it did. Right here, you know, this way, right? So that was a little mistake. Should have gone in a starter position there and that would have been great. If we got a better interaction with this long zone, then that's when more contracts will be deployed for business risk. But this one could have deserved a little bit of business risk, but I hesitated. And then in that moment, I realized, how much longer am I going to keep hesitating? I, I can't, I know what I'm doing, so why am I just reluctant to enter positions? It doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. I know what I'm doing. When I see what I want to see, if it's a great opportunity, then I deploy business risk. That's what I'm supposed to do. So I watched the longs come in, struggled around uh, the open here at 80. I really wanted to take a short here in this anti node area. But I didn't because I was looking for the, the longs to come in and, and they did. They still came in. So I'm like, okay, you know what? If I'm going short, then let's let's really get a good price, right? If if I thought that longs are gonna come in, which they they were coming in, that's that's also 
that's another main reason I didn't enter a short as much as I wanted to in this price because they were coming in. They, they came in off the kind of low end of the day, right? So they came in. Once we showed a little bit of weakness, I did enter a small, very, very small garter position on the shorts here. And I, took, I got a stop stopped out at this one node area. Now, here is the, this is the interesting part, right? This trade I took right here. It was, uh, I'm so, it was one of my best trades. I just such a textbook, just so simple, just so simple. I just, I love it, right? We came up here above 600, and the way the volume just dropped into the abyss, I was like, okay. Buyers don't keep bidding, then there's only one place this is gonna go on a Friday in Power Hour. Right? One second. The volume shelf disappeared. I mean, I kind of drew it very accurately here just really disappears so I took a starter position here 605 right here right in the volume of this anti node right it, I didn't have a drawn see the thing I didn't I didn't have any of this drawn I wasn't really prepared apart from having the long zone in the morning and then the futures market open range so I was like shit am I not following my trading plan is this bad should I feel bad about this am I breaking rules and turns out I'm not because everything here is okay we're near the high of day we're in a low volume area and I'm trading in the direction of it right the, the potential energy this is a potential energy well if you want to look, look at it from a quantum mechanical perspective and the potential rises here in this area right so if, if you were to solve the schrodinger equation for a one-dimensional particle that can that can either go up or down wave function would, in its lowest energy state, show that the particle is most likely to be found in this area, given by a, the half a wavelength of a sinusoidal curve. So I took my short here, starter position, and sellers came in. I was watching what's going to happen at this node of previous equilibrium right above the futures market range. Our long is gonna continue what they were doing in the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and make the shorts give up. They didn't, they, they weren't able to. I saw a really big offer form around 88, exactly. And I put in my offer for one mini contract. I'm ready to go in. This was me, I was like, if you don't put business, if you don't, if you don't put real business risk on these really great trades, great setups, sorry, then when are you going to bring in any profit? It's just, you can't make something out of thin air, right? I'm ready to put risk on. I'm, I'm getting over trying to be passive. So I put in my offer at 18,588 for one mini short and my stop loss was where this starter position would be break even. So if longs did come in, we would come up here and I would take a break even trade on the starter position and a 72 ticks stop loss on the mini 
So that would be roughly whatever was what is that? Upper three hundred dollars. Fitness risk. Perfect. It's a really good trade. I'm, I'm gonna put half of my daily stock on this trade. Right? And the market's closing, it's Friday. The sellers came in, I got I got the bill, the sellers came in. Flush below the open at 80 and a half. So I'm gonna move my take profit up two points from 63 to 65. So I got filled. We did eventually cover 63, like as a, uh, it got traded. And if I had just left it there, it would have been filled. But in the moment, I just really wanted to secure what I was looking for. And especially given this anti-node. So we were, we were just hovering around this anti-node at the, at the low of the futures market, and I was like, futures market opening range, and I was like, I'm asking for two points. I'm asking for 40 bucks, but I'm risking the 100, like the, the, the like 80 ticks that I'm up. Is that really a good uh, paid off? No, because I got what I was looking for, right? I shorted the volume of this, the high of day on a Friday on power out. Looking for sellers to take the market back to an equilibrium for the weekend. That's exactly what happened. Look at this quick. Look at this quick. This is what I was looking for. Exactly. And this candle opened and it started hovering around this anti node great place to post a trade in this area. So I'm not worried about what I did. However, I'll keep an eye on it. If I continue to be moving my take profit orders like that very often, we'll evaluate that later on to see what's going on there. Is it a psychological thing? Is it a, is it a doubtful thing? Or am I doubting the, the like my technical ability? So what is it? This one, it was, this one was purely, it just didn't make sense to me to ask for two points when I already got what I was looking for. And I need to just secure the trade. I was either going to do that, what I did, or I was either, I mean, I already broke even the trade at 88. I was going to move the stop down because I, I want to, I want to get something from this. I know that we're, very patient as traders, but I think there's something to be said about getting some realized stuff, right? Like, I haven't seen a physical, physical uh, fruit of my labor yet. I mean, I've been trading for a little over a year now. I haven't seen it physically. I can see it here as digital fruits, but... I think that as traders, it's okay sometimes when enough things in your mind tell you that you need to realize some digital fruits of your labor, it's okay to do it. Within a given context and given like parameters that it's healthy and makes sense logically. Did this make logical sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm short 6.05. I added at 88, and now we're trading 65. Well, I got what I'm looking for, and we went below the opening price, and we're in an, we're in an anti node in the bottom of the futures market opening range. I mean, why would why couldn't 
some buying orders come in. Why not? They could have. So that's a, that's fine. I don't really go too far into the fact that I moved my bid up by two points just to get out, just to cover my short. But see, the thing is, right now it's forty bucks. But all you gotta do is add one zero to the end of it. Maybe it's not so much a joke anymore. And then maybe even another zero to the end of that. And two points can end up saving you or costing you a lot of money. It, especially if, if it's done very often or if it's more than two points. Five, two, eight, nine. So I'll definitely be watching that, making sure I don't keep doing that. And I'm making sure that when I do something like that, it makes sense exactly like this it made sense to me. So yeah, let's, let's get out of the... We, 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 we freaking reviewed this power hour enough. Took it took a beautiful trade. So one new thing I've been doing is, you know, this is the futures market opening range. It's very simple. There's nothing to it. If it makes sense to me, I'm going to plop that as a zone, right? And it, it won't be a color when it looks like this because this one got already messed with a lot, right? We, we traded in and out, in and out. This one, I, I would color it green because it really functioned that way in the long, long zone. Uh, this New York opening range functioned as a long zone. So it's got the green color and, and it did have a trade. And yeah, I think it, I like this because it, it um, helps me see sense why there's a node here and a node below and why it, there's nothing in the middle because um, it's it's going to get eaten up quickly right like, well, we're not going to spend a lot of time here have a lot of orders here unless it's a really indecisive day which wasn't really like it looked like it looked like there was sellers all day overnight and then as soon as Powell was speaking it looked like um, things were looking bullish wasn't really an indecisive day. Indecisive day to me, in my opinion, would be like would we barely make a make a um, any distance outside of um, expanding the day's range from the futures market open. So, and what else? So another thing I want to do is like stop. I know taking one trade and being done, getting hundred like ticks on a mini is is really good it's like a base hit i mean look all i've been doing is base hits i've been barely trading let me see this week i mean yeah I barely traded i took how many trades did i take i took four trades this week on last week i took three trades last week okay this month I've only taken, seems 13, yep, 13 trades, oh wait, sorry, this is wrong, oh, oh sorry, this month I've taken 13 trades, and here's my stats, I've had about, I've had a 50% win rate from what it looks like here, and um, my losses coming out to $159.50 and then my profit is $1,269.50 Wow um, let, me, let me get a quick ratio of that That's kind of going your way Well, that's a 7 That's a 7.9 so let's call it an 8 to 1 ratio profits to loss. Right there. And it looks like my winning trades tend to be quick when I'm, when I'm doing well on a selling opportunity out. And it seems like losing trades tend to hover around. Alright, I tend to hold them. I don't know if I don't know if these are holding trades that, that were up at a lot and then I ended up like 
taking a stop loss or what it was, but that's that's the slight problem with looking at some of these metrics. Because, for example, like I said, if if when I'm right on my setup, it happens really quickly. That doesn't mean that holding long, losing trades for a long time is necessarily a bad thing. There could be a trade. You, you could have. I could have held a winning position that happened really quickly so I was in profit the whole time and I could have closed it but then I let it come all the way back to my stop loss for example 40 minutes later I don't know what, what this is right I guess this is where this metric might clear it up so at most I was um, up this much and at most I was down this much is that what this means on that's what this means so I mean this this looks good it looks like if this number was above this number then that would be a bad thing right because that would mean that I left stuff on the table by holding too long and this number being lower yeah that's sort of you would want this number to be higher than that one because that means at one point really down and then you kept holding and then recovered on it. But that's that's also not really a good thing. So I'm kind of rambling here but Seventeen ticks. All right. You can see here my time. I usually make profits is usually power hour. Never thought I'd be a power hour trader. Look at these. Let's see. All the losses are from starter positions. Even then, the starter positions, the losses from the starter positions get drastically wiped out by a profitable starter position. Last month, look at this, look, look at the difference, look at the difference. 67 trades. My win rate was 28%. So it does. It, it looks like it does even out as the range of my statistics go larger. I truly hold my trades for about the same amount of time, winning or losing. Continue with what I'm doing. 